Hi, my name is Dino Menigan, and I'm the composer for Teen Wolf on MTV. Today we're at Capitol Records, and uh, we are recording a choir uh, for a piece that we're going to be using throughout season three. So we have ten people, and it is our own personal choir of the damned. The chant came about uh, in discussions with Dino, uh, with making this much more of a season about horror and about fear and about uh, talking about films we loved like The Omen and Rosemary's Baby. Uh, with Dino, we we're always trying to go for a kind of film score. So we thought uh, getting a real choir in and uh, giving the chant uh, a deeper meaning with the season would be great for uh, a great idea for Teen Wolf and making Teen Wolf feel like a slightly more adult show this season. Jeff and I have developed a really good relationship. Um, there's a lot of trust there where no matter what he's asking me, I, I know that it's, it's going to end up being a cool idea. So um, I always have a lot of fun chasing down you know, the ideas that he'll bring up and, and finding ways to kind of bring those to life. The Druid Choir will be uh, essentially almost like a Greek chorus uh, this season of uh, Teen Wolf. Uh, in a way, it, uh, it comments on uh, the fear and the things that are about to happen but it also has a really big uh, impact in the story. It's one of the things that, uh, that Lydia Martin first hears. It's a signal uh, for our dark druid, uh, the Duroc. In a way, it's a kind of, uh, it's our, our little uh, refrain that brings in the shark and Jaws. So you always know with this chant that the bad guy is coming. Well, this season, the, the writers have chosen to go a little darker, and I think that's typically what happens. The more fun people have on a show, the darker they go. Really good new characters, uh, and some characters that we've seen before play a much bigger role uh, this season. So there's going to be a lot of new themes, a lot of new musical material. Two of our characters are twins. So uh, we actually, I'm, I'm playing with a theme for them that works around their twinness, as I am also a twin. One of the interesting things about Teen Wolf is we cross genres. We go for humor, romance, suspense, and horror, and Dino has proven to be um, just incredible at each one. So it's a challenge for him, and I think uh, uh, it, it turns out so well for us because uh, we have all these different types of music, and I think in uh, season three it's going to be even bigger and better. Uh, he's bringing new ideas, new themes, and as the show grows, as these actors grow, as the characters grow, so does the music. We did have um, one sound that I'm using a lot uh, is actually a recording I made of a, uh, one of the dogs in our obedience class howling. And uh, it ended up that she had a really spooky sounding howl once we messed with it. So you're going to hear a lot of Beatrice. What's great about Dino is, is he's aesthetically and technically brilliant. Like he, he knows how to blend exactly what you're asking for from an aesthetic sense and knows how to capture it from a technical sense. Rarely that happens. It's a difficult feat to blend the two. Uh, from past seasons, um, one of my favorite episodes was episode 10 uh, in season two. And that was where we found out about uh, Matt's backstory, uh, how he became the Canima master, and the whole story about him drowning. Allison, this last season, got to be a lot more badass. So she had her own theme that was probably the most sort of rock-based of any of the themes. Uh, episode. Uh, two of last season where Isaac has a confrontation with his father. There's a long scene uh, where Isaac's father, who was very abusive and would throw things at him, there's a very tense dinner table conversation where Isaac has to tell him about his grades. That was actually a very emotionally intense scene. Um, and Daniel Sharman really, like, really brought that out in that scene and actually writing for that, this long drawn out scene that starts very quiet was a lot of fun because there really wasn't any place for the music to hide. It was just, we just had to work with the dialogue and really let the characters bring that out. 
Dad, the semester's only half over. Isaac. There's plenty of time for Isaac. Isaac. We did put some humor in that, though. Um, right before Isaac's dad freaks out and starts throwing things at him, when he asks Isaac to tell him what his grades were, and Isaac, bracing himself, he says, it was a D. All of the cellos that are building up to the tension at that point resolve to a D. It's a, it's a D. So, <laughs> that was my three o'clock in the morning attempt at musical humor, which no one will get in the, who didn't see this.